Hi everyone, I am Jules Overschie, PAM trainer and consultant at Ovedicom. And this video is about NPSHR. I tell you more about the definition, why it is important and how to determine the value. But let's start with the definition. NPSHR stands for Net Positive Suction Head Required. This value refers to the minimum required value of the pressure at the pump's suction port. Now I will tell you why it is important to know the value of your NPSH required. Normally you will make an NPSH calculation of each installation. In that calculation you have an NPSH available and that is the NPSH of the installation and you have the NPSH required of your pump. If you have a good system, your NPSH available should have a higher value than the NPSH required of the pump. If that's not the case, you will get damage. Your impeller will get damaged like you see here in this picture. I also have the impeller with me. You can see it here in the picture. You can also see it here, maybe on the impeller there are small tiny holes in it and that holes are made by cavitation and maybe you heard that buzzword before and maybe you think oh it's only just an impeller I take it out put a new one in and my pump is running again then I have another picture maybe this will convince you more here you see a pump shaft this diameter it is and there are two pumps in that insulation and both pumps had the same damage within five months of operation. Both shafts were broken just because the NPSH available value isn't higher than the NPSH required value of the pump. How can you determine your NPSH required value? For that you go to a pump curve. And I think you know it already, a pump curve can look like this. But you have to look for your NPSH required curve. And now there are three curve blocks in this pump curve. Then you have to look for two things. The first thing is that an NPSH required curve never starts at zero capacity. And there's only one curve block, the middle one, where the curves are not starting at zero capacity. Let's enlarge this curve. Here you see that this NPSH required curve lines are not starting at zero capacity. The second thing that is important is the shape of your curve. Your NPSH curve has a shape always like this. It's going up like this. You see two curves. You see a curve for this diameter and you see a curve for this diameter. This pump curve is made for a certain medium. Always, you always have to check this medium. There's a little line underneath this pump curve and it says that this pump curve is made for cold water. If we take another pump curve, like this one, they added some extra information. They say it's not only clean water, but they also say it's at a temperature at 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we have a curve. It says NPSH, but there is no NPSH required. But still, this curve isn't starting at zero capacity and it has the shape I told you about. Also in this case we are talking about an NPSH required curve. Sometimes it's even in your curve and it says required NPSH and in this case it's for the NPSH required value in meters. It's also possible that you see NPSH3 value in your pump curve. 
Also in that case, we are talking about the NPSH required. Now you know what NPSH required is and how you can determine the value of the NPSH required. But there is a lot more to learn and to tell about NPSH. If you want to learn more about NPSH calculation, we have a great English spoken e-learning course for you called NPSH calculation for water. If you need more information about this course, please go to our website and you can find there all the information you need about this course and all our other courses. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have a question, you can leave a question under this video. For now, I only can tell you bye. I hope to see you next time.